Well, let's get you updated on our current grain trade this morning on a Monday morning. On the corn market this morning, we started out a oh, couple of pennies higher. Let's see what we're doing right now, if we can. Uh, let's go to that December contract, and it's roughly about that same area. We're at one, uh, excuse me, one and three quarters higher now at 370 and a half. And the March contract on the corn is now trading two higher. We're at 380 and a half per bushel. All the deferred contracts are trading at least two cents higher as it stands right now. All right, let's move on to our soybean trade. And in the beginning, soybeans were under just a touch of pressure. We were down about a quarter of a cent or so on the open. Well, they're getting a little bit softer now. We have January soybeans trading a penny and a quarter lower. We're at 8.95 and three quarters. That would put it about uh, two ticks from our low of the session so far. Uh, the March contract now trading a penny and a half lower, and it's quoted at 9.09 and three quarters. Just one tick from its low of the day. I will point out that March contract, it had a high overnight of 9.16 and three quarters, so we're now seven cents off of that overnight high. That's quite a turnaround uh, from our Globex market. On the soy products, such as soy meal and soy oil, we can take a look and uh, see which way they're going. Now, interesting where we have lower soybean trade, but the soy meal is actually going upward. We have the December contract, about uh, 50 cents higher. We're at 2.9950 per ton, just under that $300 benchmark. We have January up 40 cents right now at 301.60. Now to the soy oil, and in the oil market, we have December trading 49 points lower. We're at 30.39 per hundredweight, and then you have the January contract down 51 points at 30.55. Well, all the attention this morning seemed to be focused on the wheat and right out of the gate, uh, Chicago wheat just went shooting higher and uh, it lasted for uh, a little while, but it's eased off of those early highs. We have December Chicago wheat now eight and a half higher at 523 and three quarters. That is about a nickel off of its earlier high this morning. In Kansas City wheat this morning, uh, right now we have that nearby December contract still three and three quarters higher at 427 and three quarters, but that one also is off of its earlier high by about four cents. Uh, Minneapolis wheat is actually showing some strong gains here this morning, up about six. So I want to go to the phone and welcome Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. He's in Springfield, Missouri, and he joins us now. Um, Interesting trade to start out this very short trading week here. Uh, kind of a, a mixed dynamic at work here. What do you read into this? Yeah, you know, we're in that uh, low volume trading week this week when we have uh, Thanksgiving holiday. It kind of screws up this, the schedule for a lot of traders. And what they end up doing is, you know, maybe doing some Monday through Wednesday type trade, but the rest of the week gets to be a low volume. You can see some real uh, exaggerated movements, and, and when you have a lower volume week like we're seeing, uh, the wheat futures didn't take long before they rallied 10 cents and they backed off right away. But uh, you know, this market here found a lot of uh, buy stops above last week's highs. It had a bullish weekly reversal, and all that kind of combined to push us up sharply. So a lot of uh, technical gains in a week where we are, you know, maybe looking at looking for fundamental news and information. Certainly, the weather out there is uh, not real conducive to grain harvests, corn, soybeans, uh, or that last remaining spring wheat uh, crop that is, is sitting in the fields as well. So the difference between the corn and the soybean trade this morning, do you look at that as uh, some spread trading going on? Yeah, a little bit of trade going on. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, concerns that we're not going to reach that agreement. Uh, China anytime soon, and that's why we're seeing so much weakness here in the bean oil over in the soybeans. And, uh, you know, that market's coming under some selling pressure. The, co the soybean market uh, dropped last week, taking out some key technical support. And this 896, where it seems to be hovering right around, uh, that's a key technical area because there isn't much support below that until you get to around 868. On the livestock side, the cattle market kind of taking off this morning, the lean hogs sagging, and we'll talk about that with uh, Brian Hoops when we come back after these messages. We are talking with Brian Hoops, and let's take a look at our livestock trade this morning. Well, as I mentioned, the cattle market uh, coming out of the gate with a positive spin. Let's take a look at live cattle first, and on the futures in Chicago, Nearby December, they're still trading 70 higher at 119.38. That's uh, at now 119.33. So we're still within 20 cents of our high of the day. February up 73 right now at 124.58. And on the feeders, this is the one that sold off so hard into that cattle on feed report last Friday, and it looks like it's rebounding today. 
uh, gaining back about at least half of what it had lost on Friday. We have January feeders up $1.82 at 141.10. March now up $1.90 at 141.50. All the deferreds at least $2 higher, if not more. And if you look at the lean hog market in the early going today, we have December down 40 cents at 60.83. February down 68 at 66.97. Uh, last week, Brian, uh, we were watching that cash cattle trade and it seemed to be very slow. It seemed like it was evolving at prices maybe a little bit firmer than the week before. Then we got the cattle on feed report. Now this week we have a holiday on Thursday when we typically see a lot of cash cattle trade. What do you think is going to happen here? Are, are things going to be accelerated, excuse me, accelerated a little, little bit on the cash cattle market this week? A lot of times uh, we get into this holiday week that the packers will try and buy their cattle sooner in the week rather than wait until after Thanksgiving time frame. But they want to certainly do it at, uh, you know, at their price levels that they want. Um, you know, so I would expect cash to be uh, occurring on Wednesday ahead of Thanksgiving. Um, we have had years where it's occurred on Friday, but uh, that's that's not the normal for for this week. Um, usually, we get a little seasonal weakness here um, from Thanksgiving into Christmas. So, a, a bounce coming after this cattle on feed and the cold storage numbers probably should be sold, especially in the feeder cattle market. If these numbers weren't as bearish as what the trade had expected, but placements were still a nine-year high, and um, the on feed figures were eight-year high. So, these are some some big numbers that are going to come at this market here in the next you know thirty to sixty ninety days. When you look at the lean hogs and how they're performing on the charts, uh, I would imagine a lot of folks have considered them to be oversold to an extent. Uh, do you think that this is enough of a correction to the downside right now, or is there more room on the downside yet? Well, yeah, you know, you talk about the cold storage report that in the cattle market, you know, how it was supportive. It's a little bearish to pork, where supplies were up 3% from last month, 8% from a year ago level. The belly stocks were up an incredible amount. So we may, even though we're really oversold in some of these deferred contracts and due for a bounce, we may not see much of one because of this uh, bearish fundamental nature. So uh, rally's likely to be sold if we do have some sort of a correction in this hogs. But you look at the June contract still uh around $84.5 for the summer, that may be too rich of a premium, uh, given the fact that we still have a lot of uh, pork on hand and a lot in storage already. All right. Thanks, Brian, for the insight into what's going on in the markets here on a Monday. I appreciate that very much. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. Janet, that is the very latest. All right. Thanks for the kickoff.